a treat. Uh, a, well, mostly a treat for me, I guess, but hopefully also a treat for you, because hopefully you will enjoy this video. Today I am going to be unboxing and uh, checking out the Steam Deck OLED. This is the brand new version of the Steam Deck, which is, of course, the handheld gaming PC put out by Valve. It runs many, many games from your Steam library in a handheld format, much like a Nintendo Switch. And, um, this is my first Steam Deck. I did not jump on that bandwagon right away um, when it first launched, but when they announced or revealed the OLED version, I, I finally caved. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Um, and uh, this is actually more of an upgrade to the original version than the name might suggest. Uh, it's, uh, of course, does include the new OLED, the OLED screen, upgraded from an LCD screen, so that will, of course, give much deeper blacks, um, and overall just much better color rendition. The screen on this thing's actually pretty insane. It does HDR, it has, um, like, over 100% of the DCI-P3 um, coverage, um, you know, color space coverage. Anyway, it's, it's an amazing screen by all accounts. But, uh, this thing's also got, uh, some other little spec bumps, uh, in the form of, um, a more efficient, uh, CPU, some fast RAM, a bigger battery, better speakers, better haptics, just all kinds of little upgrades all over the place. So anyway, uh, hearing all this, I, I really just could not resist. <laughs> so uh, today I'm going to be unboxing uh, and checking out this whole package. Uh, you know, the accessories or whatever's in there. We'll see, I guess. And then firing it up and uh, playing a little bit of a, a game or two, probably, just to see how it is. So... Without further ado, let's uh, open this thing up. Now, uh, I must admit, I did uh, just take a peek earlier, uh, but I haven't, you know, taken anything out or, uh, you know, unwrapped anything. So, but I just, I just opened it and I just took a look. I just wanted to see it. Um, and it comes in this really unassuming box. Uh, it's just a plain cardboard box. There's really nothing to see. Uh, it's, it's very straightforward. Um, it looks an awful lot like a box that you might receive a mechanical keyboard in, actually. Um, but, uh, on the inside, of course, is, is what counts. Um, this is just here for, uh, you know, privacy purposes. <laughs> so I'm not doxing myself, uh, with my address out there. So let's open this thing up. Box 
this here has a bunch of stuff in a bunch of different languages. I guess this is listing a bunch of places you where you could, you know, use your Steam Deck where you could play your PC games like on the patio. Uh, in a test chamber on the subway uh, on the couch and of course that is the appeal of a device like this is being able to take your PC games on the go um, and you know one of the reasons I didn't jump on the Steam Deck right away was because Truth be told, I don't leave the house all that much these days. Uh, I am, uh, you know, working from home most days, and I spend a lot of time in my in my office in front of my big burly desktop PC. So, um, you know, the use case for this thing for me is maybe a bit weaker than for some others, but but I still would like to be able to game in different places around the house. It would be nice to be able to play, um, you know, on the couch in the living room, uh, or, uh, you know, in bed, uh, or, um, you know, take it with me when I travel, which I don't do a whole lot of, but I have done some this year, and it would be really nice to have on my PC game library with me. So, um, and then yeah, the, the tech upgrades with this, this version of the deck is what finally, uh, you know, pushed me over the edge, decided, uh, or made me decide it was, it was time. So it says here, Steam Deck OLED, your games in a whole new light. And the screen really is the, the big selling point that Valve is, uh, pushing with this, this revision of the deck. Um, although overall the, the power level, uh, the performance you can expect to get out of this, you know, compared to the original launch the decks is, um, you know, about the same. It's, it's not really going to be much more performant, um, except for having that longer battery life, you know. Um, so the main machine is here, over here. I'm guessing, I'm guessing that we have the, uh, the uh, charger, probably, power adapter. Steam. 
Steam Deck, which is a 50 watt hour battery in the OLED model, uh, increased from a 40 watt hour model. Uh, lovely. <laughs> um, a 40 watt hour battery um, on the in the launch LCD deck. And um, uh, that increased battery capacity along with the um, more efficient CPU in this machine, or APU, I guess, uh, not even just the CPU, it's the combined uh, CPU and GPU. Um, that results in uh, anywhere between 30 and 40% better battery life uh, for the OLED model, apparently. Um, Valve claims you should expect anywhere between 3 and 12 hours of battery life, depending on, um, you know, how intensive the game you're playing is, and, and whether you have the, you know, frame rate capped at, say, 30, or, um, unlocked. Um, for its part, the power brick here looks pretty simple. It's got the, the little Steam Deck logo. Um, and, uh, a fairly long power cable, I believe. They say this is two and a half meters, so that that's long enough to allow you to sit somewhere and have it plugged into the wall. You know, sit on the couch and have it plugged in if you want. USB Type C charging, of course, on this end here. And um, yeah, it's just a regular kind of vinyl, you know, PVC coated cable but it looks robust enough. Um, the uh, cable is not actually removable from the power brick. This is not a plug, it's kind of hardwired in. But I'm sure that if you did happen to damage this, uh, you could get another one without too much issue. Um, one of the things that made me choose the Steam Deck over other competing handhelds that are available these days, such as the Asus ROG Ally um, and the like. I don't know if I can get this out of here easily. This is just the, you know, I guess power brick information. I think I'm just going to leave that in there because... Wi-Fi 6E upgraded from 
555 um, on the base deck and uh, also featuring Bluetooth 5.3, the latest Bluetooth revision. All right, let's pull this out. Nothing else in the box, just an empty box. Pretty simple and very easy to recycle. Honestly, I appreciate the simplicity and um, uh, recyclability of Valve's packaging here. It's just a few pieces of cardboard. So props to Valve for that.
you know, if you have content that is mastered for those, um, those wider color gamuts, um, like, uh, DCI-P3, then, uh, this screen can take advantage of that. That's nice, isn't it? Let's go. 
a carrying case. I'm not sure if it's this exact carrying case, but um, some kind of carrying case. And there it is, the Steam Deck OLED version, one terabyte version in all its beauty. Let's take that out for just a moment. Feels good. And uh, set that aside and just uh, finish kind of looking at uh, this case, which as you can see is nicely molded on the inside to accommodate the deck. And uh, this here looks to be a microfiber cloth with which to clean the Steam Deck's screen. Very nice. Now I am led to believe that there's some kind of removable inner liner here. The, oh, I see. So this is actually sort of a, a, a double case. We've got the outer hard shell. Um, also has this mesh bag. I don't actually quite know what this is for, but we've got a little mesh bag. It's got a little drawstring, like so. Um, it's nice, it's squishy. Actually, I'm hundred percent sure. Oh, I guess it's for the power adapter. That makes sense. Then you can sort of tuck that in here. There's this recessed area under here uh, to tuck the power adapter into in its little baggie. That would definitely make sense. But um, yeah, this this outer hard shell can be removed. If you want, and left with And in 
instead shift our focus to the main event here, the Steam Deck OLED. Um, first impressions are it's very comfortable to hold, much more comfortable than uh, a Nintendo Switch, and that is of course because it's a lot deeper than a Nintendo Switch it has these these uh, built-in ergonomic grips on each side, um, but that allows you to to uh, hold it more or less like you would a controller, right? Um, I find sometimes the switch feels like it's kind of digging into your palms a little bit. Uh, the Joy Cons do. Now, of course, you can get you know uh, Joy Cons that are molded more like this third-party ones if you want, um, but, uh, um, you know, the, this, this does not have removable controllers, it's, it's all one piece, um, and it's nicely balanced, like it sort of just sits comfortably in the palm of your hand, I feel like I could, you know, hold this for quite a long time and, uh, not get, uh, you know, fatigued or anything like that. Um, its size is bigger than the Nintendo Switch, of course. Um, it, uh, has a 7.4 inch screen, uh, which, uh, is, I think, about, uh, one inch diagonally larger than the, uh, launch model Switch, and, um, about half an inch diagonally larger than the Switch OLED. OLED switch. Um, but the screen resolution is pretty similar. It's 12, 1280 horizontal by 800 vertical. So it's it's going to be uh, similar to uh, the switch in terms of its, um, you know, DPI, like its pixel pitch. Um, for controls, we've got over on the left a D-pad, of course, here. Susceptible to a drift over time, um, but. Uh, 
as I was mentioning earlier, they are pretty easy to replace, and you can, in fact, buy aftermarket third-party all-effect switches from uh, wherever, Amazon or whatever, and uh, do that replacement yourself if you like, if you like. Uh, and then we have what is uh, one of the major advantages of the deck, which is its touch pads. So we have a touch pad on each side, and these are essentially track pads, which allow you to emulate um, a mouse, because of course many PC games are designed for mouse and keyboard, and so um, they, uh, they allow you to play those mouse-driven games even on the deck. And I apologize, I think it keeps, the camera keeps losing focus because it's trying to focus on the reflections in the screen <laughs> rather than on the, uh, the, uh, you know, the controller features here. So I'll try and, try and prevent that from happening. But, uh, we have on the left, this is a button. It is. We have a steam button over here on the left side, uh, positioned right above a speaker grill. So we have front firing speakers on the left, one on the right. I've heard that they are actually like shockingly good for a device of this size. Um, and apparently they're even better on the OLED model. They've been upgraded. Uh, and then we've got like another dot 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 button over here on the right. So those feel pretty good. They feel like quality controls. Um, even if they're maybe not quite up to the standards of uh, uh, some of the other controllers you might have used, I'd say um, they don't feel bad, that's for sure. Moving around the top edge here, we've got, um, is that going to focus for me? There we go. Uh, we've got volume up and down buttons there. We've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. We have a vent for the, uh, you know, exhaust air, uh, a USB type C port and a power button and LED. We've also got shoulder buttons. Which have a little bit of a pinginess to them. But will feel immediately familiar to uh, anybody used to, you know, an Xbox controller for sure. Um, and we've got analog triggers. Analog triggers which uh, have a really nice, satisfying action to them, actually. Those feel great. And if we come right around the back, we can see... Um, we got the Valve logo right in the center. Uh, we have another grill here to uh, let some heat escape, presumably. Uh, a little bit of info, certifications, and whatnot. But we've also got four programmable rear paddle buttons. That you trigger with your, uh, your grip, of course. And, um, between those and the array of other input options we have here, I think uh, we're really well covered for, uh, you know, the vast majority of PC games. I mean, some of them can, of course, get quite complex simulators and whatnot, um, but I, I honestly think you're pretty well covered, um, even for, like, MMOs, if you get, uh, you know, if you're clever with your key bindings and such. Um, You've probably noticed that uh, this thing is black all the way around. Uh, you know, the buttons, the, uh, the case, of course, is this matte black ABS plastic. Um, it's, got a, it's got a pleasing texture to it. Um, and 
guys get to watch me go through the whole setup here. I might have to blur a couple of things just so it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, again, not, I'm not going to dox myself. Oh, I'm going to have to go double check the password for the Wi-Fi. All right, we are connected to the Wi-Fi. And it's installing something. Something. We've got a progress bar. Ten minutes remaining. That seems unlikely. I'm not quite sure what it's installing. I guess, you know, maybe the, uh, the uh, Steam OS um, comes in some kind of, you know, un installed compressed state on the drive and then it just installs itself on first boot seems a little strange i don't know why you know it wouldn't just come fully pre-installed but that's okay uh the steam deck runs um you know i have a lady customized version of linux that valve puts out steam os I believe it's based on Arch Linux. Um, I'm not going to pretend I know anything about Linux. I, it's nothing I've ever really taken the time to dive into. But I know uh, many do, uh, you know, adhere <laughs> to the, uh, the open source life. All right. That was a lot less than 10 minutes. We were just about done. Shutting down Steam. Okay. Bye-bye. I assume it's going to restart for us. Oh, there we go. So you can hear the fans spin up there. Oh, it's done. Um... I guess that's like max speed for the fans, which, uh, honestly, uh, not very loud at all. That was quite reasonable. Um, and I suspect most of the time, you know, while gaming, it's going to be a lot quieter than that, so. Waiting on uh, something. Um, the, um, anti-glare, uh, screen, I'm noticing. There's that startup sound again. Oh, okay, we've got a firmware update, so this thing did not ship with the most updated firmware. That makes sense, because I'm sure they're pushing updates pretty regularly. Hello? You got one of the first Steam Deck OLED units, and we need to install some updates before you're ready to go. This will take seven to eight minutes and a couple of reboots. Okay, well, <laughs> uh, your screen will turn off for a minute in the middle. Hang tight, and you'll be gaming in no time. I like that they tell you what to expect. They're like, don't worry, it'll do some stuff that might seem scary, but it's fine. It's all part of the plan. So I'm going to install those updates and then we'll we'll get back to this. And the update is done and it's just dumped us on a uh, sign-in screen for Steam here. It uh, wasn't actually that long. I feel like it was less than the seven to eight minutes they, they said it would take. Um, although I must admit I was not carefully counting. Um, so, um, we can sign in with, uh, account name and password, or use the Steam Mobile app, um, which is what I'm going to do, because that requires less typing. And there we go, approved the sign-in request on my phone, that's a nice, easy way to do it, eh? And we are signed in. Welcome to Steam. Deck. Before you start playing, let's take a quick tour of the device. Press any button or tap the screen to continue. This is the Steam button. Press this to access your library, store, settings, and more. 
present a little diffuse steam button shortcuts. This is the quick action button. Press to quickly view your notifications, friends list, quick or friends list, quick settings, and more. Up here's the power button. Yes, indeed. Press once to suspend or resume. Press and hold to access the power menu. Over here we've got the volume buttons, indeed. And last of all, down below is the micro SD card slot. Oh yeah, I don't think we actually looked at that previously. It's the only thing on the bottom, right there. Please focus. Please. I beg of you. There we go. And, um, that dandy, if I'm going to use that, which I probably won't, at least not initially, because I've got a terabyte of internal storage, which will be faster, so have fun. We hope you enjoy your Steam Deck. Thank you very much. And here we are. So, um, yes, new to library. I recently picked up Dredge uh, on sale. Uh, at the recommendation of one of our uh, community members, actually, Rango Steel. You might know Rango Steel from, uh, well, uh, from the Twitch streams, um, and also from the uh, end of video supporter shout out uh, in every one of these videos, um, and all kinds of other good stuff as well. I should point out this might not look so great to you right now because um, the screen, I mean, might not look so great because I, um, you know, didn't configure the camera to look natural with the screen. Uh, this might look a little overexposed. It probably looks a little cool right now as well. I'll try and fix that a bit in post um, so you can get a better sense of how it actually looks. Um, especially once I, uh, start playing a game here, but, um, uh, yeah, I just wanted to let you know that it's, it's not looking its best through the, uh, you know, the camera right now. So, um, it looks like, uh, you know, it's a, it's a pretty, uh, oh yeah. And use the stuff down here. A pretty nicely put together uh, UI, which is, um, you know, designed to give it sort of this console like experience and be very easy to use. So I think I'm going to spend a little bit of time poking around um, with the UI and uh, install a game or two because um, that's going to take a little bit to download some stuff, you know. Um, and get those configured, and then we will um, jump on back in here. I do like how, you know, each one changes the background. That's fun. Go over to Skyrim. Forza. Um, and, uh, and then we'll jump back into, into uh, the video here, and I'll try out a game or two, see how they play on this thing. Alright, so I have uh, installed a few games on here and uh, also uh, taken a little time to uh, charge it up a bit. And um, the first game that I'm gonna try out here is Model Knot. Model Knot. This is a game you might have seen here on the channel. Uh, quite recently, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's a really charming uh, little indie game about cleaning up an underwater environment and uh, making friends with these little creatures called Lottles. And it has this beautiful lo-fi, very chunky, pixely kind of aesthetic. Um, and it immediately struck me as a game that would probably be excellent on the Steam Deck. Um, uh, before I jump in, I want to point out real quick, um, I think you can see kind of a scrolling, um, you know, 
a series of bands here on the screen. I'm a little surprised that that is coming through on the camera, actually, but it's it's not visible um, in person. It's it's just an artifact um, of the um, refresh on the screen, I guess, and the uh, shutter speed on the camera. Um, I played around with it to try and minimize it, but I couldn't entirely, so it's it's just going to have to uh, be uh, as it is, but um, just know that that's not visible in person whatsoever. So, uh, let's jump into Lot a Lot here. I did fire up each of these games briefly after I installed them to, you know, make sure they, they worked. Uh, each of the games that, uh, we're gonna look at here right now. And indeed, Lottle Nut does run beautifully. Um, as one might expect, it's not a, an especially graphically intensive game. <laughs> That's kind of part of the appeal, of course. And, um, it is running at a beautiful, smooth, locked, uh, 60 FPS, um, and it looks just gorgeous on this screen, just gorgeous. I'll point out once again, too, that, um, the colors that you are seeing are probably not quite true to life. Uh, I think it's looking a little bit cool, um, on the camera. Uh, and we'll try to adjust it, uh, so that it's a little more representative, but it's, uh, Oh, hey, look at it. It's our Lottle. It's our little Frankie. Hey there, Frankie. How you doing? Satisfied and hunger. Uh, happy and clean. Excellent. Um, I did adjust the uh, brightness a bit so that it should look less blown out for you, hopefully. But I will say, just uh, in person, to my eyes, this screen looks phenomenal phenomenal. Um, I fired up a couple other games, which you'll see shortly, um, and they just both look beautiful, as does this one. It's really, really good. Um, and I think this game is really well suited to the deck. This is a game I can definitely see myself playing uh, before bed is kind of a little wind-down game, you know. Um, it's just a very good vibes kind of game. Let's clean up some of this junk. It's pretty satisfying. <laughs> anyway, a uh, lot, lot looks great, runs great, and uh, is... Just as I suspected, a pretty stellar Steam Deck game uh, by all all appearances. So uh, let's uh, check out uh, the next one. So the next game I have here is a little bit more graphically complex, uh, although actually quite a bit older. This is, uh, of course, Euro Truck Simulator 2, uh, a favorite of mine that I've played on the channel uh, a handful of times and that I stream pretty regularly. And uh, I wasn't quite sure how the deck was going to handle this game uh, in terms of performance. Um, you know, even though it's a, a very old game now, it's been updated a lot over the years. and. Um, you know, on the highest graphical settings, it's, it can actually be somewhat demanding. Um, and moreover, I, I have a bunch of mods installed, uh, through Steam Workshop, and I wasn't sure if those were gonna sync and work properly here on the deck. Um, as well as I have it, you know, um, synced with my World of Trucks profile, um, you know, so I can do all those, um, World of Trucks delivery jobs, and, you know, of course my, um, you know, cloud s saves on Steam, so there was a lot going on, and I wasn't sure if it was all gonna work 
but uh, I'm happy to report that it all works great, like shockingly well, like pretty much flawlessly. Um, I just installed it and it, it downloaded and it downloaded all my Steam Workshop mods and I got into the game here and I signed into my World of Trucks account and it just syncs everything. So, um, you know, my, my save games are here, uh, all my mods are here and, uh, working, and, uh, the game actually runs, like, really surprisingly well. Um, uh, I've got it on, I think, the, uh, maximum graphic settings preset. Um, if we go to the options here. Yeah, so I've got it maxed out on Ultra. Um, now if you go into advanced settings, you know, there are some things you can turn up a bit higher, um, but it's all pretty darn high, uh, you know, at least the highest preset, and, um, and it's even running at like 125% render scale, so it's, it's rendering at like more than the native resolution, uh, on here, and if we, if we hit drive, um, Okay, you can't see much here because it's nighttime, but let's start up the truck. And um, let's uh, turn on our, our headlights here. And uh, maybe we can get a look out the window. Um, you know, it's not running at like 60, but I bet you it's pulling 30 um, uh, most of the time anyway. And that's going to be variable depending on where you know, uh, you're driving and whatnot, but, um, well, we can see exactly what kind of FPS we're getting. What I'll say is that it feels totally playable, you know, and that's, um, the most important thing. Uh, what am I doing here? There we go. Yeah, so we're getting sort of 30s to 40 FPS, which, again, you know, on a, a big old desktop, uh, you know, maybe feels a little sluggish, um, and especially with, like, a mouse and keyboard, but, you know, using, um, uh, the controller like this, you know, these inputs, and, uh, on a handheld, like, 30 FPS feels totally, uh, adequate, and of course, if you wanted, you could, uh, you know, sacrifice some graphical fidelity and get it up to 60, I suspect. Um, let's go for a short little drive here. Um, I was just here getting some sleep, I guess. Um, but we'll just turn around. We'll head out of this parking lot. Where am I right now? I think I'm... Oh. Um, I am in Romania, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's pretty fun. And, uh, you know, it's the whole, the whole game is here, right? Like, the massive, uh, you know, map of Europe that you can explore. And it's, it's kind of, like, shocking, actually, uh, that, like, all my PC games are just here, and they're just working, uh, in a handheld. You know, I'm of the generation that grew up with the Game Boy <laughs> as our handheld, and GBA, right? Uh, it's like a Game Gear, these things, and, um, you know, I remember the first time ever seeing, um, and playing on a Game Boy Advance and being just so blown away by those graphics and what was achievable. Um, and the fact that we now just have our full fat PC games, you know, running well uh, in a handheld is, is wild to me. Obviously, this is an entirely different class of device than the GBA, but, um, you know, you get what I mean. And, yeah, I mean, I know phones are very powerful these days, and so this is maybe a little bit less impressive um, for that reason, but I don't know. I still think it's pretty darn impressive. Um, and 
uh, of course, since we're not uh, able to sort of maintain, you know, solid 60 here, um, and we're sort of bouncing around in the low 40s, high 30s, what you can do is go into the performance settings and you can set the frame limit. Um, so let's say we wanted to lock it at 30, get a nice, consistent, well-paced 30 FPS. You notice that the screen is still refreshing at 90 hertz, even if the frame rate is locked at 30 FPS, which means we get a nice, responsive input. Um, and, uh, you know, it feels and looks pretty solid, despite the fact that it's running at, you know, a relatively low frame rate. Um, and yeah, I'll remind you again, like we are super sampling this game, it's running at 125% resolution, so, you know, there's a lot, <laughs> sorry buddy, there's a lot of, um, you know, tweaking we could do and get this running better should we want to, um, but yeah, this, you know, full simulator is very... PC-centric kind of game is running quite happily here um, on, you know, shockingly high graphical settings, I think, for, you know, for what this device is. Uh, it looks and runs fantastic. Um, but I was going to, uh, gosh, do we have any, oops, that's wrong. I feel like I need my high beams, but I don't know. Oops, no, that's very dark. <laughs> I don't know what the control for high beams here is. Okay, well, we're just gonna, we're just gonna, just, uh, quit for now. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, there's one more game I was gonna show you guys here that's a bit more modern yet again and looks just stunning, just stunning, uh, considering uh, you know, what we're dealing with here. And that game is Elden Ring. Elden Ring, which I have, uh, running here on the high graphics preset, the high graphics preset at uh, native, uh, 1280 by 800 resolution. Uh, I do not of course have uh, ray tracing enabled. That is a massive FPS hit and although the Steam Deck is capable of ray tracing, uh, I don't think that's how I would want to play, uh, you know, this game. Uh, I'm sure it would tank the FPS. Um, but, you know, on the uh, high graphic setting here, it looks pretty darn good on a handheld on this screen. Um, as you can hear though, it is taxing this handheld. Uh, that, uh, that fan is spinning up. And if I put my hand here, I can feel quite a bit of hot air being moved out of this machine. Um, but, um, it's actually calming down a little bit now. Um, but it's still completely playable. I still have the FPS locked at 30, and as you can see, we're getting a rock solid 30 here. If I turn off that um, 30 FPS cap, if we just set it to like uh, all the way back up to 90, uh, you can see we are getting in the sort of low 40s, um, pretty similar again, you know, high 30s there, similar to what we were seeing in Euro Truck, actually, just by coincidence. Um, and uncapped, uh, it feels great, actually. Um, here we're using the variable rate refresh of this panel, so we're not going to see any um, judder or uh, tearing or anything like that. And, um, you know, it feels really good, but you can hear it's really laboring now. So, if we, uh, uh, come back in here and we bring that, uh, frame rate limit back to 30 FPS, 
glass um, that will uh, keep it um, a little less, uh, you know, taxed, and um, and that 30 FPS still feels really well paced, really smooth, really smooth, and totally playable. Um, again, especially considering the the context of you know being on a handheld uh, small screen um, with uh, you know controller inputs, um, and yeah, it just looks killer. It looks so good. I just came here to uh, the area overlooking Liurnia of the lakes because it's so pretty. Although now it looks like the fog has rolled in, so <laughs> we uh, do not get to see it. But let's I don't know. Let's go somewhere else. Let's um. Let's go uh, over here. No, not Lake Side Crystal Cave. I don't want to go there. Let's go um, over here. Sure. Let's see if the weather's any better. I gotta play more of this game, you guys. I've put in quite a few hours, but there's still so much more to it. I did stream it a little while ago. Uh, special community request. Um, but, you know, it's, it's Elden Ring. It's the whole dang thing. Uh, the entire massive, beautiful game running on a handheld. On a handheld, you guys. And, like, shockingly well at that. Very smooth. Very playable. Um, but really, it's, it's, it's better than I expected, <laughs> I have to say. It looks really, really good, and it runs really, really well. What a cool thing. Um, and I think that's where I'm going to leave off tonight, um, because, uh, you know, uh, I could just keep playing stuff here, and if y'all are interested in seeing me or, you know, hearing me play more games here on the, uh, Steam Deck, I would be happy to do uh, more videos with it in future. Uh, there is something cozy about just kind of, uh, watching someone play games on handheld, I, I think anyway, personally. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, this can play pretty much anything, so, um, I would certainly be happy to do that. I feel like we didn't get enough, oh yeah, the mouse emulation works as well, so you can get the mouse look if you want. Um, I feel like we didn't get enough controller sounds in here. Also, this thing is quieted right down. I don't know if it's just because that view is not very taxing. Yeah, I think that was it. When we look back this way, you can hear it starting to ramp the fan up again. And then if we turn back this way... Give it a few seconds and I think it'll pipe down. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> it's pretty dynamic. Uh, but yes, um, I better wrap this up. Anyhow, uh, thank you so much for joining me for this video. I hope you found it interesting. Getting to, you know, see what's in this, uh, this package and what's up with this handheld. Um, and how it performs. And of course, I hope you found it relaxing. And I look very forward to having you back here next time. Farewell for now, my friends. Hey, do you remember earlier in the video where I mentioned that there is a supporter thank you section at the end of the video? Well, we're here. It's now. 
This is the special thanks section where I give very special thanks to the kind supporters of this channel, those who support by signing up for my Patreon and my YouTube memberships, and you can see their illustrious names right here. Not only do these fine individuals support the content that I create here, but they also get some fun perks like early access to my weekend videos, um, and at higher tiers, uh, getting to vote in uh, a poll every month to select the topic of one of my videos, and at the highest tier, the Fusro Da tier, well, those fine folks get their names read out in a special spoken shout out in each and every video, and it is my great honor to read you the names of our Fusro Da tier supporters for this video, starting with Rango Steel, whom you heard about earlier. Rango recommended uh, that I pick up Dredge, which I'm very much looking forward to trying out um, on a future stream or in a future video. So thanks, Rango. Uh, K Time, Odin Sun. Drummer Brit, Jake Luffney, Ragnar Ragnarsson. <laughs> I don't know what happened to my voice there. That was very awkward. Um, I was just getting so excited about Ragnar Ragnarsson and Captain Vanquisher. These are our Fusro Da dear patrons for this video patrons and YouTube members, um, but there's all kinds of other awesome individuals here as well that support what I do, and you, dear friends, you could be among them if you like. If you enjoy what I do here, if it brings you some relaxation or comfort, if you would like to see more of this kind of content, please consider checking out the links down below in the video description. You will find links to both the Patreon and the YouTube memberships there, and uh, the rewards uh, and perks are equivalent on each, pretty much. So, uh, whichever fits you best and whatever tier is right for you is available there. Once again, thank you so very, very much to our amazing 